Dr. David Richardson. I'm a cataract and glaucoma surgeon in Southern California. During my daily commute, I like to discuss those topics that there's simply not enough time to discuss in detail in a typical exam room situation. Today, I'd like to discuss an exciting new class of glaucoma medication, the Rho kinase or ROC inhibitor class. So let's go. So Rho kinase is an enzyme that uh, functions at the level of the trabecular meshwork to essentially stiffen it up. Uh, this results in decreased outflow of the trabecular, trabecular meshwork. Now, an inhibitor of Rho kinase keeps that enzyme from building up the stiffness in the trabecular meshwork. And so it essentially relaxes the trabecular meshwork. So this class of molecules is very exciting because it actually works at the level of the problem in glaucoma, which is at the trabecular meshwork. Now, this class of uh, glaucoma medication, uh, which was the first one to be approved and the only one to be approved so far in the US, which is uh, Natarsudil, the brand name is Ropressa, uh, this was approved in late 2017. And what's particularly exciting about this class, besides the fact that it's, it's really the first uh, true solo class of glaucoma medication to be approved in 20 years, uh, I don't really count the nitric oxide class as a solo class because so far the only thing that's available is a combination with prostaglandins as I discussed in a prior video. Uh, so this is a really exciting class, both because it's the first on its own class to be approved in 20 years, and uh, because it works at the trabecular meshwork. But not only that, this class of medications uh, works through multiple mechanisms. So not only does the ROC inhibitor class work to relax the trabecular meshwork, increasing outflow and lowering pressure that way, it also works in a manner similar to most of the other glaucoma medication classes, which is that it reduces the amount of fluid produced by the ciliary body. Uh, there, there's at least one other mechanism of benefit in, that's related to pressure reduction, and that is that rho kinase inhibitors also reduce the episcleral venous pressure. Uh, now to back up for a moment, when fluid leaves the eye through the trabecular meshwork, it drains into Schlem's canal, which is a, a ring around the front of the eye, and then into what are called the collector channels. From the collector channels, this fluid is dumped into the blood system through the episcleral venous uh, complex. Now, whatever the pressure is in the episcleral venous complex there is essentially the absolute lowest that the pressure in the eye can be um, because otherwise the blood would flow into the eye rather than the aqueous flowing out of the eye. So by lowering the episcleral venous pressure, the ROC inhibitors allow for potential lower pressure in the eye. So three mechanisms of intraocular pressure lowering, very exciting. In addition to that, at least in laboratory studies, uh, the ROC inhibitors appear to have a, a, a neuroprotective effect that's independent of intraocular pressure, an anti-inflammatory uh, or antioxidant effect, and um, then there's, a, there's one other effect that I can't, oh, that's right, um, improving blood flow to the eye, which we've talked about in other videos. Uh, so there's, there's quite a bit to remember in terms of uh, the different uh, positive benefits or potential benefits on glaucoma with this class of medications. Um, so with all these potential benefits, uh, how well does Ropressa or Natarsudil actually work in patients? Well, it turns out that it works out pretty well for most, but not for everyone. So let me uh, see if I can explain that a bit. In those with intraocular pressures below 25 millimeters of mercury, it works about as well as Temelol or uh, the prostaglandin analog class, which is great because those are the two classes that tend to work the best of any of the classes of glaucoma medications. 
That being said, most classes of medications work proportional to the initial intraocular pressure, which means that the higher the intraocular pressure to begin with, the more pressure reduction you get. So essentially they work by lowering the pressure by a certain percentage. Now Tarsudil, however, is unique in that it appears to lower the pressure by four to six millimeters of mercury regardless of the initial pressure. So what that means is that for people with higher pressures, it's not that impressive. If you start with 30 and you end up with 25, not that great of a reduction. However, if you start at 18 and end up at 12 or 13, then that's, that's significant. What this means is that this class of medications may have a particular benefit in those with what's called normal tension glaucoma, uh, which is glaucoma that's associated with um, pressures that are not elevated. Uh, so I just arrived in the office, so uh, still a bit to get through, but again, it's an important class, so I want to go through it in some detail. Uh, so it's exciting in, in that it doesn't work like other medications, and this may have to do with the multiple kind of mechanisms of action that it has, that it has this kind of constant effect. So it's particularly exciting for the potential to treat normal tension glaucoma, which is a hard type of glaucoma to treat um, because of the, uh, the percentage reduction that, that most other medication classes work by, meaning that if you start out with a, a low pressure, the percentage reduction is not gonna be that impressive, a couple millimeters of mercury. Um, now the other interesting thing is that another type of glaucoma called um, steroid responsive glaucoma, which is essentially that uh, those who use chronic steroid drops in particular can have elevated pressure, turns out that the steroid response is due to a change in the trabecular meshwork. And one of the mechanisms of this response is through uh, rho kinase. So if you can inhibit rho kinase, you can potentially a decrease the steroid related elevation in intraocular pressure. So uh, very exciting there. Other things that are exciting about the, this uh, uh, particular class of medication and uh, Natarsudil also is that you only have to take it once a day. Uh, so you take it at night as you would a prostaglandin analog uh, and the effect seems to last for uh, at least 24 hours. Interestingly, because it's actually working by uh, changing the structure of the trabecular meshwork you don't see the full effect for up to about six weeks. So you can't really say that it's working or not working until you've given it a good try. Uh, now, that gets us to uh, the issue of side effect and cost, because in order to give it a good try and to continue it, it has to be tolerable and it has to be affordable. Now, as far as tolerability, um, the at least Natarsudil, uh, has similar side effects to the prostaglandin analogs. The most common being hyperemia or red eye. It happens in about 50, 50% of those who take this medication. Uh, other things that can be seen, about 15, 15% of people taking it will end up with a hemorrhage on the white part of the eye, what we call a subconjunctival hemorrhage. This is not damaging to the eye, it goes away on its own, but cosmetically it's not pleasant. Uh, then there's also just the ir issue of irritation when you put it in the eye that's common among uh, multiple eye drops. Um, also unique to this class, or the, the stinging is not unique, but unique to this class is what's called cornea verticillata. These are little uh, deposits of pigment on the surface of the cornea, which you cannot see except under the, the, uh, the examining room microscope, which we call slit lamp. So your ophthalmologist can see them, but you should not be able to see them and they do not affect the vision. As far as uh, um, other symptoms, uh, some transient blurred vision, uh, rare headache, that's pretty much it. No systemic uh, side effects that, uh, that we're aware of at this point. So most people are able to tolerate the redness and irritation, but not everybody. Uh, however, if you take it at night, that should limit the redness and irritation, and also that tends to get better with time. So if you can just push through it, uh, that's helpful. Now let's talk about something that might be tougher to push through, and that's cost. Um, as a new class of medication, available only by brand, uh, it's not covered by most insurances, and the, uh, the sticker price, if you will, is about $250 a bottle. So that's $3,000 a year. We're talking about the same 
uh, cost as most glaucoma surgeries, and that's just for one year. Uh, glaucoma surgeries tend to provide years of intraocular pressure lowering benefit. Uh, so for this particular class of medications, if you're taking this for 10 years, and glaucoma is a chronic disease, that's $30,000 if it's not paid for by insurance. That's a that's the cost of a, of a car. Um, clearly, this is not sustainable for most people. Uh, fortunately, at least for now, uh, the company that makes Ropressa is providing discount coupons, but not every, everyone is eligible for those. Not all pharmacies either know how to process those discount cards, nor do all pharmacies really want to. Um, and so this can be a real problem. So uh, just to summarize, uh, this class of medications, the ROC inhibitors, is very exciting in terms of its potential. Uh, it works through multiple mechanisms of action, some of which are neuroprotective, so uh, not uh, dependent on intraocular pressure reduction. Uh, the way it reduces pressure is not dependent on the initial pressure, so it may have some extra benefit in uh, unique types of glaucoma, like normal tension glaucoma, may actually be a benefit to a hard-to-treat glaucoma, uh, which is a steroid-responsive glaucoma. Uh, but all of these wonderful things about this class may be just completely destroyed by the, the cost. Um, and uh, unfortunately, that's something that's, that's just going to be a barrier that's too high for most people who have glaucoma. I don't know what the answer to that is. Uh, it's going to be a while before this goes generic, uh, and um, there's not going to be any competition from other companies uh, in the near future in this class of medications. So uh, unfortunately, this is going to be an option that's limited to those who are eligible for the discount cards and have insurance that covers it. I'm hoping that's going to change because otherwise I'm very excited and uh, bullish on this particular medication and class of medications. So anyway, I know this has been a particularly, little, particularly long video today. <laughs> and, uh, it's definitely a sign that I need to stop talking, um, but a very important topic. Uh, I look forward to speaking about more topics, and if you uh, make comments as to what topics you would like to hear, I will uh, try to place those in future cues and uh, talk about those on my commutes. All right, take care.